I just want to understand because there are so many uh, Muslims in, in Denmark that, that say that um, since they have a job and they pay taxes, they're fully integrated and, and, and uh, they should just be allowed to practice their faith because uh, that's the freedom of, of, of Danish society, that you're allowed to have freedom of religion. Is this really something that, that would work in the long term, that if every Muslim is allowed to just practice their faith, uh, provided they have a job, then Denmark will be fine? Could you make a prognosis here? Let's go back in history. Let's look at history. Turkey used to be Christian. Egypt used to be Christian. Pakistan used to be uh, Hindu. Afghanistan used to be Buddhist. North Africa used to be Christian. Where are those countries now? They're all Muslim. Yes. It's what I call the law of saturation. How long did it take for Anatolia, my Asia Minor, or Turkey to become Muslim? It took centuries. Centuries. So Islam is never in a hurry. Right now we're satisfied with this small bit, but it will grow. Because over time, history teaches this fact. Unless Muslims are driven out by force, once they set up camp in your country, over enough period of time that country will become 100% Muslim. That's what history teaches us. And yet, in America, this history is not taught in the schools. This history is not taught in the churches. This history is not taught by the Jews. Why is that? Now you've asked the most difficult question of the interview. When I see what the doctrine of Islam says, which is, I can be hated, I can be killed, I can be demeaned, I go, I don't like that. And when I'm dealing with someone who is a anybody, I'll ask them difficult questions sometimes. These same peaceful Muslims which you're talking about do not allow difficult questions to be asked, or you'll see another side of them. So, Muhammad, remember, started out his career as a peaceful Muslim, but he ended it as a political jihadist. So when we're dealing with Islam, we need to realize that it represents a process. That is, if, I, if you're a Muslim and I come to you and I say, I'm interested in Islam, he won't tell me that Muhammad was killing Kafirs. He's going to tell you about the beautiful religion and what the beautiful community, the Ummah, is. He's going to sell you the Islam of Mecca. He's not going to sell you the Islam of Medina. So you're going to get the good, good part, and they're not going to tell you. It is a gradual revelation. But you just said earlier that Medina was actually the latest in life of Muhammad. Yes. And you also said that whatever comes later, it takes precedence over what came earlier. What the Quran says, <clears throat> what the Quran says is not that the earlier is false, but the latter is better and stronger. So Medina is better and stronger. Yes, but the early one is still true. Do you see here how the logic of Islam is like to us? And yet that's the way it works. It makes them very powerful. It makes it easy to, I wouldn't say lie, but in fact lie because you're, you're choosing which contradictory truth you're telling. Exactly. Exactly. So it makes them very powerful. Uh, if they're dealing with someone to convert them to Islam who is a peaceful person, they can preach that part. But if you're dealing in prison and you're trying to convert a man to Islam who is already a murderer, you can emphasize the latter part. Whatever you need. So Islam is like this buffet table. You can go and pick off of it what you want. 